Now, when it comes to summertime crappie fishing, a lot of times I'll use baits anywhere from one inch to an inch and a half long. Here's a little bait right here. It looks like a Bobby Garland bait, bait but it's a generic bait. I forget the name of it. I'm sorry, I don't have the pack with me. I've used them before, and they catch a lot of fish. This is a 132nd ounce jig head that I have. I don't have a loop knot, usually do in a jig. I have a Palomar knot tied to it. The reason is, is because I'm using two pound line. I don't hardly ever use a loop knot with two pound test line. I just, I've had, I've been broke too many times. So I'll use a Palomar knot to get the maximum strength out of this two pound line. Now I'm using an old Shakespeare rod. It's five and a half foot long, ultra light. Uh, when I say old, this rod is probably about 25 years old, folks. I've caught a lot of crappie with it over the years. But I'm using a Fago LT1000 Daiwa reel. Like I said, it's loaded, loaded with two pound test, high vis line. And that's what we're going to be doing today. The reason why I selected white and shark trees, the water is a little bit dingy. We've been having quite a bit of rain, which is good. The water is a little bit dingy, and white and shark truce, well, is a great combination for dingy water. I don't know where these hairs rock. Well, let's make us a cast. I'm gonna let it fall probably about 10 feet to start with, folks. We're gonna try that. We gotta figure out how deep they are before we can catch any fish. There's no doubt in my mind about that. All right, we're at 10 feet. I'm gonna hold my rod up. The reason why I'm using this five and a half foot rod is because this bridge is low and I've actually, in years past, I've broke about three rods up under this bridge right here. Fishing from the bank, just like we're doing right now. Longer rods, six and a half, seven foot rods. Just a slow, steady, the same speed. Oh, I just missed one right there. That was a light bite. A crappie bite is a definite thump. I mean, even even when they're biting real light, it's a definite thump. Hard to explain, but I recognize a crappie bite, a bite above a bluegill bite. There he is. That's a crappie. They're hitting extremely light. This is a pretty good one right here. But they will, they'll barrel out that 10 foot. All of them's been around 10 feet. Like I've mentioned folks, very important. Getting that depth just right. But they'll, once you hook them, they'll come straight up. <laughs> they want to shake that jig. Ain't a bad crappie. Not for summertime. Quit. You don't do that. You're doing it too much. <laughs> doing it too much. When it comes to fishing for crappie in the summer when they're not very active or any time of the year when they're not very active, fish as slow as you possibly can and then fish a little bit slower and fish with smaller baits. Get away from the two inch size baits, go down to the inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half size baits. You'll catch more fish when, when they're, especially in the summertime. Now that's just an opinion, but I'm gonna tell you it's almost a fact. Let's let him go right here. I'm gonna revive him just a little bit. <laughs> 
There he goes. He's in fine shape. All right. Whoa. But I'm going to tell you, slow is the best way to catch crappie, folks. And it don't matter what time of the year it is. It don't matter what the water temperature is. You will catch crappie a lot more and a lot easier by fishing slow. Slower the better. And there's another one. You see that? That was a light, light bite. This is a little bitty crappie. Well, I thought he was a little smaller than that, but... Come on in here. If you notice, a lot of these crappie I'm catching is just barely hooked on the outside edge of the rim of the mouth. That's because they really don't really want to bite. But because I'm fishing slow and keeping that jig in front of them, they, they just can't help but to bite it. See there? How quick I landed that fish. <laughs> Look at there, folks. And it ain't raining right here where I'm at. Now it's starting to. <laughs> It still ain't raining, just barely sprinkling right here where I'm at. And I'm 25 feet from that heavy rain right there. Y'all can see it. Ain't that something how that works out? Now it's raining. I'm going to get under here. <laughs> oh, maybe this will, maybe this will activate the back. There we go. Hey, this may be a keeper right here, folks. Yep, this may be a keeper right here. This is a big crappie. Let's see what we got here. Golly, what a crappie. Mm-hmm. Look here, what a slab, folks. Now that is a big fish right there. I didn't expect that. That's a white crappie, too. Golly, that fish has got a mouth like a bass. I want y'all to look what a crappie right there. That is a huge crappie. Look how big its mouth is. That is a big crappie, but I'm not going to keep him. We're going to let this one go. Too big to eat, folks. Too big. That ain't no good. Not to me. That's a big fish right there. There he goes. That's a big crappie right there. That's a slab and a half. Mm-mm-mm. There's one. Golly. That fish hit close to this. That's the first one that hit that close to the bank, folks. Mm. Let me land him. I had my drag set too tight. When I set the hook right there, my drag didn't slip. That ain't good with two pound line. Quit, quit. Doggone thing. Somehow or another, I bumped it and tightened it. Bumped it with my hand a couple of times and tightened that drag because when I set the hook, there was no slipping, and I don't like that. That's a good way to get that little line popped. That's one thing about two pound line, you have to really watch it. Okay, let's put him in the bucket. do that again I'm pretty sure we can I've got their depth dialed in I got the the speed dialed in this color is working 
Bursal only eats beans because he's a vegetarian. There he is. Boy, that was a light bite. This one here may be a keeper. That fish was so deep though, folks, it's pitiful. Yeah, he'll keep. It's actually a doggone good fish. Yep, that's a good eating size fish right there now. Ah, he got twisted up, there he comes. Yep, that's a good one right there. That's what we want. <laughs> that one's got some fillets on him. Quit, quit, quit. Stop it. He ain't too big, he ain't too little. Really a healthy fish. Let's put him in the bucket. These fish um, relate to current. What I mean by that, they position themselves in current to feed efficiently. That's the best way I can put it. But when, there's, when it's dead like this, you have to really slow down and fish very, very precise and very patiently to catch a few of these fish. And as far as depth, how, hey, I just got a bite right there. There he is. As far as depth, this one's not, this is a little bitty one. This one ain't gonna make the grade. You have to be very precise. You have to really, really focus and keep that jig at, at the exact depth. When this is taking place, they're hard to catch like this. When the water temperature gets 90 plus, it makes it very difficult. But I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. Dropping line size from four or six pound test line, what, whichever one you're accustomed to using, down to two, and then using a much lighter jig head and a, and a lot smaller jig, you know, uh, the one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half sizes will keep you catching crappie. The same applies in the winter time. When the water gets extra cold, same thing. I'll drop down light line, tiny jig heads and tiny jigs and keep catching crappie. Um, there's no doubt about it that it work. And I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel. Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. Hey, woo. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.